we are going to design and test an amplifier that is capable of amplifying the output of a microphone so we can hear it on a loudspeaker. So let's look at the design of that amplifier. So first of all, we know that the output of our microphone from the previous activities showed that it had a 0.2 volt signal. And we know that in our amplifiers using a plus and minus 5 volt power supply, our maximum voltage we can get out there for must be 10 volts. So what gain do we want from our amplifier? Well, we know that if the maximum is 10 and the input is going to be 0 0.2, out divided by in gives us our gain, which equals 50. Now, this may seem a lot to some of you, but actually it's nothing um, out of the ordinary. So I'm going to be using an inverting amplifier for this particular amplifier using my 741 so there there is my amp there is my inverting input my non-inverting input which are pins 2 and pins 3 I have a 5 volt power supply and a minus 5 volt power supply those are pins 4 and pin 7 and I have an output which is pin 6 the output is going to be connected to the loudspeaker which is going to go down to naught volts. Then my input is going to be a microphone which will also go down to naught volts and then I've got my little resistor array of R in and RF. Now, what value do we want for R in and RF? Well, we know that the gain is equal to 50, which is equal to minus RF over R in. So the ratio of those two must be 50 to 1. But we're not going to use those as the values of resistors. So if we multiply both of them by 1000, that gives us 50K and 1K. As a general rule of thumb, we always say that resistors in an op amp should be greater than 1K. Now, whilst that's right on the limit, if we were to increase that by a factor of 10 again, that will give us values of 500K and 10K. So those are the values I will use. So RF is equal to 500K and RIN is equal to 10K. And then finally, my non-inverting input is also going to go down to 0 volts. So let's build and test that circuit. So here is my circuit. So what I've done, I've connected up, instead of the microphone at the moment, I've connected up a frequency generator to replicate a microphone signal. And at the output, I'm going to look at it on an oscilloscope. So we're going to look at the input and look at the output to start with. And on channel one of my oscilloscope, here is my input from my frequency generator. And we can see that it is currently 1, 2, 3, 4 divisions times 50 millivolts, which is 200 millivolts, which is 0 0.2 of a volt. So that is the same as my microphone was giving me in the last activities. So let's look at the output. There is my output waveform. Now we can see here that actually it is clipping at the bottom. Now the reason for that is we assumed that our output would give us 10 volts plus or minus 5 but we know from previous experiments that it really gives us plus 4 volts and minus 3 volts so really the movement is only about a 7 volt output so that's one of the reasons why it's saturating especially on the negative part of the waveform but we'll not worry about that too much so i've got my input my output and now let's look at both of them and they look as though they are pretty much the same size not a lot in them but what you have to remember is the input is on 50 millivolts per division but the output is currently sitting at 2 volts per division so the output is actually 2 volts 4 volts 6 volts 
whereas the input is only 0.2 of a volt. So we have a sub substantial gain in our op amp. So let's connect up a microphone and see what happens. So I'm going to remove the input waveform from the frequency generator because we don't want both in there. I'm going to connect up the microphone. There is my loudspeaker. Let's connect that to the output. And already I can start to hear it hum. So here is my microphone. And we can hear the microphone when I talk into it. You can hear a little bit. Hopefully you can hear it tapping. So we've obviously got something happening there. So let's look at the waveforms on our oscilloscope. Input and output. I'm going to put the output lower here so that you can see both. And let's put them on. Let's put them. There we go. I'm just going to decrease the input and increase the output. And you can see that the output waveform is quite clearly amplified because the output is on one volt per division and the input is on point one of a volt per division. So in other words, the input and output are different by a factor of 10 where the output the output is reduced by by 10 on this. Do, do, do. But obviously my amplifier is working. One of the problems with this circuit is that number one, the microphone is quite a poor quality microphone. The 741 is not really designed for any power amplification, just for signal amplification. And therefore with the loudspeaker drawing current from the output of the circuit, obviously it doesn't function terribly well. And the loudspeaker is not what I would call a quality loudspeaker. But what we're going to do, we're going to have a look at an amplifier that is specifically designed to amplify audio signals. In other words, we're going to be using a power amplifier.